The subcuticular suture is very useful when you're trying to get a nice cosmetic outcome. Now, almost all of it is underneath the surface of the skin. First of all, bring the suture through at point A and bring it out to the apex of the wound. You then want to now snake the suture in the subcuticular layer of the skin backwards and forwards, creating this repetitive S shape before bringing it back out through the skin at B. Now the skin is held together purely by the friction of the suture, so that when you pull it at either end, it should close, as shown like this, without leaving any visible stitch marks. Now I've skipped the actual entry point then to go on to how to pass a suture through the tissue. Now you need to get it just underneath the skin in the subcuticular layer before taking a bite on the opposite side of the wound directly across from where you've just exited. So the suture which is passing between either edge of the wound should go horizontally straight across. Now we're going to go back to the previous side Again, curving through the tissues, underneath the level of the skin. So there is no suture which is visible above the skin. We're going to pass back again. And note how you can use the toothed forceps just to pull back the skin to reveal the layer that you want to get your suture to pass through. Now you continue this backwards and forwards until you've reached the end of your wound. The advantages of the subcuticular is that there is no suture visible, so you don't get any of the suture marks in the skin. Also, you don't have to remove it if you're using an absorbable suture, as it is completely underneath the skin and therefore is used often in children. It has disadvantages in that it's not a hemostatic suture, and it's hold, only holding the wound together by the friction of the suture alone. Then simply pull either ends, and so pull the wound together neatly. 